Good morning, a happy new year, and fuck you if you don't like me. Um, you know, um, I'm going to do this quick video uh, because, you know, we're about to switch clocks, you know what I mean? We, we flipped the, about to flip the calendar over. Um, you know, I just want to wish you guys a great new year, and, um, you know, I wish you money next year. I don't wish you nothing but money. Take care of your family and feed your, feed your people next year. That's what I want. I want the Americans to be happy and satisfied in the new year. So, um, I've been offered revenue for Broke Man Studio, and I've been offered revenue for Good Old Gourmet, and I've been offered revenue for um, uh, No Man Need Die, and Sonoma County Fair, and your Sonoma County Fair, and the Godfather of YouTube. So they want to offer me money, and but then, on another hand, they want to disable you know, any way for me to earn the money. They keep on sending me things telling me that, you know, I can uh, uh, ask for a, um, they owe me some money, in other words, and they're telling me to fill out these papers so I can get paid. And I'm like, you know, if I fill out these papers so I can get paid, you've already fixed it so I can't get paid. You know, I got all these damn channels and um, now they're screwing with me. So um, that's why I haven't done nothing. And uh, since I blacked out most of my videos, I've been, well, put like this, I averaged, I think it was like 15,000 hits a month, and now it's dropped all the way to 7,000 hits in 30 days, so hopefully they have learned their lesson, and um, on top of that, um, I told you guys several times that I, I Google my name, and there'd be websites with my face and my videos on it all over the internet. After what I did, 60, 70% of those websites are gone. They're just not there. There's no videos on there for them to, to, to manipulate. Um, Broke Man Studio. I went back to Broke Man Studio and I plugged up the music equipment. And, you know, then we had some family drama. I did a, a diss song about a relative and it started big drama. So I shut down Broke Man Studio for a minute and we'll go back um, as soon as the year starts. Um, I have several videos in the can. And I mean, there's videos I did the other day. I did a video about the NBA. It was the worst day of my life when I had to watch the, you know, the game on the computer. Um, uh, the economy is so screwed up. We shovel our cable around, or not the cable, but the satellite around. And, um, you know, last time my wife shuffled the cable, I lost all my sports channels. So, you know, I had to watch that last preseason game on the computer. And, um, you know, I have the, the NBA ticket on the computer, so I'm thinking I'm going to be able to watch the game, right? But I got the little scoreboard, and I had, I can watch every D-League game, but I can't watch every NBA game. And it was all bad, so I had to watch the game. I did a video about it, but the season has already started, so if I put the video out now, it completely makes no sense. So if the video goes out, it'll have to go out in the compilation, and the compilations will be seen on a different channel, a channel which I can get paid for. So, um... I just want to tell you folks out there, I do think about you, and I do care about my people out here in YouTube. Um, like I said, I'm trying to get paid for my work, and the thing is, every time they give me the opportunity to get paid, they say I clicked on my own damn videos. Well, how can I click on my own videos on these other pages that I don't even go to? So, um, you know, once again, they disabled my, my funding, but then they want to tell me to fill out papers to get funding. And it's just completely stupid, and it's, it's bullshit. It's like, you know, if you don't want to pay a black man for being straight, for telling the truth, for speaking his mind, um, then you go ahead and keep paying these little kids. You go ahead and keep playing uh, these uh, flamboyant homosexuals. You go ahead and keep paying those people who you believe that makes a mark for you. Um, I'm not pop culture. I won't try to tell people to fucking go out and, and buy a Justin Bieber album. I'm not going to tell people to go play none of that shit they hear on the radio. I won't do that. You know, I tell the truth. You know, and the truth is this. You know, we're in, in serious straits in this country. And, um, you know, and music and video games and that bullshit is just a fucking distraction. Um, you can listen to music, but the content of what they're sticking in your ear sucks. I'd rather sing a song that makes no sense to nobody at all, knowing that it's completely different. It is completely different the way I do things than the way things are. 
It's because this set of rules of what we're supposed to be or how we're supposed to act or what we're supposed to listen to is fucking pissing me off. I'm tired of seeing artificial black people all over fucking TV. Every time you see a cool white dude, he's got to be rapping and trying to be black. Every time you see this shit on TV, it just turns my stomach. Individuals cannot be individuals anymore. We're all lemmings. I'm tired of whenever somebody black does something for it to become pop. It's sad. It's pitiful. Half the time we joke around and we're bullshitting and we don't mean for that shit to become, quote, status, the world fucking view. It's not like that. So if I go over there and jump up and down, say a few words or whatever and do a spin and shit, I don't want to see some white dudes doing it seven months later getting paid for it. That's bullshit. And I know it sounds racist and it comes off like that, but I remember when white people were white people. You know what I mean? I'm tired of it. I'm tired of when black people act a certain way or carry themselves a certain way. And I'm really tired of seeing white people carry themselves in that way that makes me not want to look at black people. Once again, it's whites and blacks. I looked at the news. What do you know about the heated dual side mirrors? Come on, man. It's like, I'm tired of the mockery. You know, uh, imitation and flattery and all that. Don't imitate black people, please. Because when you imitate black people, you lose something. Because you end up teaching black people stupid shit. When white people imitate black people, black people learn dumb shit from white people. And I will explain it. If you take pop culture, the black part of pop culture, when we're talking about gangster rap and, and how things were bad in the neighborhood. And you take that, ain't throw a white face on it. And then you got these people rapping about how things are bad in the neighborhood. You white black people see that shit and be like, it used to be like that. But then they bring it back around again. And it's just creating stupidity. When the Three Stooges used to go around slapping each other and poking each other's eyeballs out, you didn't see people doing that shit. You get three black guys to start poking each other's eyeballs out and slapping the shit out of each other like the Three Stooges, and you'll see white kids doing it, walking up and down the street. I'm tired of when I hear white people calling each other niggas. Y'all niggas is tripping. I don't want to hear that shit. I'm tired when I hear black people calling each other niggas. Because a nigga ain't nothing but a broke down slang word for nigger. Now, when you learn something about life and history, and history of life, you think about it. You don't want some white person calling you nigger. And why you run around calling yourself nigger? First of all, oh, I ain't calling him nigger. 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 Think about it. Nigger is slang for nigger. So if the massa want to whoop the shit out of y'all niggas, whip ready, whip smart niggas, and now that's what you are. You are exactly what they told you you would be because you perpetuate the same stereotypical shit in which you were created in. In other words, when you take a person from a country, strip all that they are, and give them a new identity, that identity becomes theirs. They mold it. They control it. They move around in it. And once it's not bad, once they can relate, then it becomes them. The American black is a created black. We were stripped, given their God, their Jesus, their belief system, and it morphed into what we call the nigger. Now understand what I'm saying. If you take a million white people from England in 1831 and you take them way somewhere else where they're the minority and have them overruled by a group of people, they become what they're told to be. The Indians became Mexicans. See? You understand what I'm saying? 
the American Indians were here. Spanish got here, turned them into Mexicans. Well, how do you make some sense out of it? It makes no sense. If there's a group of people in this place and you come over and you give them Christianity, did they ask for it? No. Pushed on them. Stole a complete identity of a people, gave them a new identity, and now you get pissed off because they're taking your fucking chicken shit jobs. So you look at what they did to the black man. Kidnapped, brainwashed, 750 years later, that same brainwashing is spilled over onto their kids. There's more dumb white kids out there acting black than dumb black kids out there acting white. And what is an, how can you act white? What is acting white? A lot of people say, because I don't speak thick Ebonics, no motherfuckers and niggas and man, my balls and my bitches and my hoes, I act white. Because I carry myself in a certain manner, I'm acting white. President Obama is acting white. Because that's the perception. People can't be fucking human beings anymore. We can't be individuals anymore because we are what we were raised to be, what we were programmed to be, what we were taught to be. A bunch of afraid, racist, bigoted, hateful fucking people. People who were told that this person did something to you. This person did something to your ancestors. These people messed over your people. But the truth is, America itself is a large experiment which is coming to a head. They did it to the Indians, they did it to the blacks, and they've done it to the whites. The experiment is almost at its apex. Once we turn that corner, get to that pivotal point, then they will reevaluate what they want to do. If they have to destroy the project, they will, and then they will start all over. They start all over with classical music, a soothing music, a music to guide and teach people. No words, just imagination. Listen to the music. Listen to the horns of the classical music, the violins of the classical music, the harps, the cellos. Listen. Feel the music. Fast forward it 200 years. Bring in electrical music, digital sound, and ignorance. Now you have voices telling people about the music, listening to the songs and the stories and the words. The words are what guide us. Think about it. The golden age of television. What did they show on TV first? What was the first things they showed on TV? Comedy shows. All the dramas were still done on the radio. The voice is telling you how people should be at. What people should be doing. What people should be wearing. Then the television showed them. This is how a man dresses. This is what a woman wears. These are what we're supposed to be like. If you watch TV, there's still not a high level of successful black. There's still no serious high levels of successful Hispanics or Asians on TV. The boss primarily is white or a black guy supervisor who slightly slacking really doesn't care. Watch the plight of people on television. Who makes the mistakes? Who makes the hard decisions on these shows? Slide back into the music. Now you have tribal sounds. Specialized music for one group or the other. No longer will this group of people have to listen to everyone's music. They can listen to their own music. 
plus the lyrics, everyone telling how their stories are, perpetuating the stories, glorifying the bad, making the bad, oh, wow, they survived that? The plight of our country and our people is all balled up into a big old ground up mesh of bullshit. And we all must think that when we look at things from other people's perspectives, how can we possibly be that bad? But we are. I'm watching a movie right now about rape. I spit on your grave. Excellent movie. But the movie glorifies rape and revenge. So, you see, just recently, a bunch of guys at a college campus that had this uh, uh, brochure out, you know, one of these uh, fraternities, and it's like, who would you most likely want to rape? And you think about the plight of our children, people being molested. And life was tough. I was dead bad childhood, too. Life was tough. And look at what we got now. Look. We got these people are insane. Whites, blacks, Mexicans, Asians, people throwing their babies out of windows. We are a depressed, oppressed, compressed, <laughs> compressed people. We're oppressed. We have good nature in every one of us, but no reason to share it. No urge to share it no need to share it we can't be respectful because we remember too much you remind me of a bad time so i'm gonna give you a bad time we live in a police state where sheriff john is constantly looking for a dime or a nickel or something they have a government who's run out of muck they're playing risk around the world and we're risking our lives just to even try to find a job. So what do we do as a people? We're all racist. We're all sexist. We're all suppressed, depressed, and compressed. We're all stressed. We're all hungry items in which we want and we don't worry about what we need I need this that and this I want that I'm gonna work to get what I want we've been taught wrong we've been reprogrammed incorrectly who do we blame like evil can we blame evil can we blame God? What does she do? You know who we can blame. We can blame ourselves for allowing the evil to take over. And how did the evil take over? It's simple. Need. The necessity. You need, I need it, I need it. That overwhelming need created the evil. The evil that, that guides and binds us. You do that black man wrong and you can have everything that he has. You do that white guy wrong, you can have everything he has. You do those people wrong over there, you can get everything they got. But, you gotta join me first. But they don't tell you that. You gotta join in order to live comfortable. Where do we sign up? You don't know. They pick and choose. You gotta say the right thing to the right person at the right point in time in life to get chosen to be on Team Evil. Instead, you just work for Team Evil. You try your best to, to get in that spot so you can live good forever. All any American wants to do is to be able to die comfortable. Die leaving your family something. Die leaving your children some tomorrow. 
That's all any American ever wants to do is just to be comfortable. I want to go to the movies. I want to go to the show. I want to go there. I want to go there. That's all we want to do is be able to live our lives without working to get it. But who taught us how to be lazy? Was it that TV? No. TV taught us to be divisive. The TV taught us the differences between us. The TV taught us to look at each and every individual for what they're worth based on face value. You look like this, therefore you act like that, therefore this is what you are based on what I've seen on TV. Not every black man is Theo Huxtable, Cliff Huxtable, or Booger. Not every white dude is Dobie Gillis, Justin Timberlake, or the Beaver the Cleavage Boy. You know, not every Mexican is Cheech Marin. You know what I'm saying? George Lopez. No. We here in America have been lied to, reprogrammed, purified, homogenized, sterilized, victimized, and that's what we are. This is a country of victims. Victims born into experimental life situations, situational life situations, you know, don't have enough money to take care of our families, don't have enough money to take care of our neighbors, don't have enough money to take care of our friends. We live in a monetary system set, created, and made for those who come late not to be able to eat, for those who don't have not to be able to get, and for those with to keep that in which they want to hold. In other words, I am going to put a a mile or two between me and you. I am going to place a river and a mountain between you and happiness. I am going to guarantee my granddaughter can go to Stanford. I see that is the American dream. There's no I and team right? I, I need this. I got to get that. I got it. The built-in selfishness that we've learned from birth. If you can't look at the controls around us and, and think, what is this? This is an experiment. It could be bigger than we think it is. A lot of people truly believe that uh, we as human beings are probably some experiment from some aliens and they just like oh this shit is uh, and left you get it they left and the perception of God what is God who is God hmm? how many men have you seen give birth but is God a male name or a female name? Hmm? Creator of life has to be a man, right? Every picture of me is a white man too, right? An old white man with a beard. Looked like Santa's older brother. That God? Huh? Why does a picture of God or the Lord Savior or even his only begotten son, Jesus, why are they all depicted in one color, one shade, one shape? in one image. Makes sense? Everything that you read about so-called God, we were made in his image. 
we, all human beings, right? Or is it all life? What? What kind of book is it to be written to where it has to be deciphered? Shouldn't the words of our Lord, our God, be clear as the skin on our bodies? Clear as the sky above us? Clear as the picture on your screen? Well, it's not too clear. Right? But people in power manipulate words. Me, King Al, well, I got to rewrite the Bible. God and his bronze skin. Think about it. Hair like wool and a skin like copper. Who the fuck is that guy? Is he an imposter? Think about it. Why is it in the Bible? His hair was like wool and his skin was like copper. Who's that white guy? He must be an imposter. So if Jesus looked black, what are white guys? Hmm? Now think about it. That was a piece of the manipulation that King James missed. Hair like wool. Hmm. No one's going to read that part. Field and thinking, it was like, hair fine as silk. The skin had a hue. <laughs> manipulation of words. Not the radio, remember? The radio I was talking about. The stories on the radio, they had the serials and you're talking and you're, oh, ah. From classical music, stories. They even read the Bible on the radio. Truth. Truth is, we are an organic computer built and created by something or someone for some reason. As all the life on this planet evolves, we are the only thing on this planet that hasn't evolved. We're devolving. We're getting dumber and stupider as we go. Why is this? When one man speaks his opinion, he can be judged based on the things he says about another group of people, and so on and so forth. If someone of color hurts your feelings, does that mean the guy next to you is going to do the same thing? If that man was treating you wrong, does that mean you should go to women and vice versa? So life itself will always be a puzzle, a never-ending puzzle, to whereas we always constantly find new pieces. And the problem with this puzzle is we believe we already have the picture together. But if the picture's already together, where are these new pieces coming from? And where do they go? Who gets these new pieces to the puzzle and when do they get to insert them into the picture? Why do we have to sit back and let someone else color the picture in which is our lives? How come we can't make our own judgment calls when it comes to should we work or not? When you look at the big picture, is it the company's responsibility to take care of the people in which they flee from? or the people taking care of the company in which they make sure runs. What do I mean by the people make sure the company runs? Well, if we don't buy their products, they cannot survive. They cannot survive without us. The batteries that run the whole matrix. Am I confusing you enough, or do I just want to go back and talk about God one more time? No, I won't. But maybe I might. It all depends on how I feel by the time I get to the end of this damn next few minutes. So I spoke about the exploitation of America and the blackalization of America. There is too much of black pop culture bleeding into our society. Too much. And it's not the good parts of our culture. It's the negativity part. It's the struggle parts. Well, a lot of white people haven't had to face the same struggles. In 2012, 
they will. In 2011, most white people felt the wrath of white people. What I mean by this is this. You look like the controller. Therefore, the controller controls you more. And if you don't understand that little riddle, then think about it. If you're scared of black people, and you're in a room full of white people, and a white person robs you, and you're white, what did you learn from the fear that you gained from being scared of black people? When white people will do to you just the same as a black person will. What have you learned about black people that black people didn't know about you? Is it true that white people's hair smells like a wet dog when it's wet? No, it's not true. I smelled people. And they don't smell like wet dogs when their hair is wet. So you look at a stereotype. Is every white man a racist? Yes, he is. Is that true? Yeah. Is every white woman a racist? Yes, it's true. Is every black man a racist? Yeah, it's true. Black woman? Yes, it's true. We're all racist in this country because that's the way we were born. If you look at a man and say black man or white man instead of that guy or that person over there, you're racist, period. That black girl, you're racist. That white man over there, you're racist. I am a racist. I'm a realist, though, because I hate people who hate. So I hate black people. I hate white people. I hate Mexicans, I hate Asians, I hate all fucking Europeans, period. I don't like Chinese people. I don't like nobody. You want me to tell you who I love? I love black people. I love white people. I love Mexicans. I love Asians. I love those Eurocentric bastards too. There's a difference between hate, hate, and hate. When I tried to talk to the guy down the street, just moved in down the street, military, Lithuanian, asshole, look down on me. See, I'm wearing this old Pendleton. I'm going to do that. I got one with a hole in it. The back of it is ripped. I wear it. Walk down the street with a big old rip in my jacket. Yes, I do. Why? It's because of perception. If I look like a bum, you're not going to fuck with me. I'll pull out that damn smartphone and shit. <gasps> so think about it. When you look and say, oh, look at that black guy. Look what he's doing. Racist. If you have to say the person's color before you say they sex, black girl, black woman, that woman over there in the green shirt, the brunette, That black boy did this and that black girl. That white man. The man in the green car over there. The guy in the Ford Explorer. That son of a bitch in a uh, brown Lexus. You know what I mean? We can't possibly not know that we're in some controlled situation. We cannot possibly not see that there's controls placed. We have to be idiots to believe that this is just how it's going to be. It's not going to be like this. We must wake up and be ourselves. I remember there was a radio station. They played soul, funk, rock. You know, every blue moon you hear a country song go in there, you know? Now, you got R&B hip-hop. Now, hip-hop was hip-hop. Not hip-hop and R&B. Is it when 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 certain group of people have more than one, you got to combine it? Because, oh, you guys got five different kinds of music. It's not fair. We only had three. It's not right. It's also not right for radio stations. TV stations, 
especially television. Whenever there's a perceived to be black show on, there's black commercials. See what I'm saying? Um, I used to watch Soul Train back in the day because all my friends used to watch American Bandstand anyway. Remember I once I was in jail and uh, white guys wanted to watch his Beetlejuice and everybody else wanted to watch Soul Train or American Bandstand. You know they put them on at the same time, you know. And um, it was a big old fight. Cartoons or coons. That's what the white guy used to say. It's either cartoons or coons up in this motherfucker. One white dude say, I like to see some coons. <laughs> I really don't want to watch no cartoons. Women dancing, we in jail, ass. That's cool. You're a nigga lover. You know what I mean? It's like dumb shit. That whole big old day was bad. I was accused of instigating that whole thing. I'm like, why the hell y'all grown ass people want to look at some fucking cartoons? There's ass on that. Well, let's watch some ass and titties bouncing. Come on, man. Big old argument. It was stupid. We are test subjects. That's the bottom line. You know, this is a real world study. And it's been going on for like 400 years. So learn, people. Learn one thing. Learn to respect people of all different shades. If you can't learn to respect, you know, the person that you have to stand next to, or you have to be around, you can't learn to respect the people that you you need to survive, then um, you're lost. You're the part of the study that teaches people we can keep them separated. And we are separated. Not by an electrical fence, not by some weird dog whistle that'll you know stop us from bumping at each other. We are separated by an invisible wall. And when we look at that wall, that wall has faces on it. Faces of those who did you wrong. Faces of those who you have been told that did you wrong. And every time you go in a certain neighborhood, you see that wall with those faces. Those black people live over there. Those Mexican people live over there. Those white people live over there. I'm not crossing that fence. I'm not walking through that wall. That is the divide in which they have conquered us with. Then they tell you there's a color attached to it. Blacks, whites. And the truth of the matter is the bottom line, the overall truth is there is no master race that is the truth the truth is the smart outwit the dumb and just like the animals in the wilderness the strong will survive well the strong will always survive if you create a weak you see what I'm saying if you not allow, if you do not allow another group of people to become strong, then the strong will always survive. The strong will always be on top. But the problem is with these elitists, they create the underclass to keep themselves on top. In other words, I don't like those people. Let's keep 
those people in position to battery. They will be the battery. These people will provide for all of our people. They will be our sustenance and our bat. They will work for us. And that is where we're stuck. In an ever sucking vacuum, sucking the will and the life out of us so we don't succeed. So we can't put forth a future to where we can control tomorrow. We cannot guarantee our great granddaughter's college. If we hit the lotto, they will find a reason to take the money before we can put it into a long term financial gain profit-making thing to where as we can take care of our generations to come. See, our tomorrow has been leased for their today. They are not just white, Spanish, European. Old money controls us. New money divides us. No money is the future for us. So how can you fix this? How can any of this be fixed? Well, if we stop camping and yelling at the top 1% and start yelling at the top 5, we start farming and feeding people without somebody telling us you can't do that. We give unequivocally to those who need so one day those who have benefited from our gifts can make sure we don't need. The only way out of this is to be respectful, caring, and nurturing to those who are weaker than us. If we nurture the weak, we will become the strong and only the strong will win in the end. This has been 40 Minutes. Thank you for your time. Happy New Year. May God bless you because if she did not give us birth, then who did?